And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted that there will be many Dajjals. In an authentic hadith reported in Musad Imam Ahmad and other books, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and there is a version of it in Sahih Muslim, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there shall be after me, listen to this, 30 Dajjalun Kathabun. 30 Dajjals. All of them Kathab. كُلُّهُمْ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّهُ نَبِي Everyone is claiming that he is a Nabi. وَأَنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِ And there is no Nabi after me. What do we learn from this hadith? It's not just one Dajjal. There are many, we can call them in English, Dajjal with a small d. Or we can say, many Dajjals, no problem. But there is one Dajjal with a big d, okay? Or the major Dajjal. So there are many, many Dajjals. Thalathun in one hadith. Thirty. What is the sign of these false Dajjal? Kulluhum yaz'umu annahu Nabi. Everyone says the same claim. I am Nabi, I am Nabi, I am Nabi. And the Prophet said, Wa annahu la Nabiya ba'di. From this we learn a principle, my dear brothers and sisters. Anybody who claims he is a Nabi, he is in fact what? A Dajjal. Is that clear? Anybody who claims he is a Nabi, you can call him a title. And that title is, you are a Dajjal. A Dajjal. As for the Dajjal, that will be the last of them. The 30th of them. That is the big Dajjal. That is the worst of them. And before that time, there will be plenty of mini Dajjals. And we had one here in America as well. This Louis Farrakhan. Uh, no, sorry, not Lus Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad, who, uh, the founder of the Nation of Islam, he claimed that he is Nabi. And he claimed that Allah inspires him. And uh, he claimed openly that I am the Prophet of God. He changed his, he was born Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Poole. He changed his name to Elijah Muhammad. And he then said that you have to recite the kalima, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And by that he meant he is the messenger. He called himself Muhammad and then he said, whenever a Muslim says Muhammad Rasulullah, that is me. And so he taught to his people this and he is one of the last of the Dajjals to come and Allah knows how many will come until the, the end of times. There are two interesting aspects that are found in Hadith literature that confuse the average reader and in fact they even confuse some of the Sahaba. So they still remain elements of confusion about the issue of Dajjal. The first of them was that there was an individual who lived at the time of the Prophet ﷺ whom even the Prophet ﷺ for a period of time didn't know is he that Dajjal or is he a minor Dajjal? Okay, he didn't know. And this incident is mentioned in Sahih Muslim and many books of hadith. It is an authentic incident. Multiple narrations exist about a certain young man who lived in Medina, who was from one of the Yahudi tribes. And he was a sorcerer. He had a alaqa, a connection with the jinn. He would call the jinn. And he was a magician. And he would pretend he knew the future. And he would foretell the future. You know, in English, we call them a soothsayer. He would foretell the future. And in our religion, anybody who pretends to know the future is a liar. And in our religion, anybody who invokes the jinn and calls out to the jinn, this is a magician. We don't call out to the jinn. We don't do anything for the jinn. And perhaps in another lecture, I'll talk about this reality of how mankind has a relationship with the jinn, which is a very scary and interesting and deep topic. And all of our men and women love talking about the issue of jinn. Jinn stories are swapped at night when the hours become in the wee hours of the night. It becomes common to swap ancient jinn stories. And inshallah, one day I'll give an academic lecture. What is all of this? Is there something called jinn? Is there something called magic? And inshallah, we'll explain at that stage. For now, realize that it is possible for evil people to invoke the jinn. It is possible. And when they do so, this is what we call magic. And that's why magic is haram. It is always haram to invoke the jinn because they are wanting nothing but evil. Whoever does so must sacrifice tawheed and get involved in shirk because the payments that jinns accept, evil jinns, because you have good jinns as well, the payments that jinns accept is what? Do you think they will accept your American Express? 
Do they care about dollars and cents? What is the currency you will give the jinn? Your worship. That's the only thing the jinn wants. The jinn doesn't care about your credit score. He doesn't care about your credit cards and your money. What will the jinn do with credit cards and money? What does the jinn want? The same thing he wanted, Iblis wanted, that ana khayrum min. I am better than this creation. Let this creation bow down to me. Let this creation worship me. And if the jinn gets this, in return, the jinn will do some favors for you. Right? We'll go and tell you something that whatever. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. So there was this magician at the time of the Prophet wasallam, by the name of Safi ibn Sayyad. That was his name. Safi ibn Sayyad. And some say his name was Abdullah ibn Sayyad, but his name was Safi. Safi ibn Sayyad. And he was from one of the Yahudi tribes who remained living in Medina for a number of years. Not all of the Jewish tribes were expelled. Some small families remained. And he was from of those tribes that lived on the outskirts of Medina. And when our Prophet migrated to Medina, Safi ibn Sayyad was a young child and he was about to reach puberty. And that's when, and so he's around 13 years old. And that's when our Prophet begins interacting with him. And there are a number of interesting narrations about uh, Safi ibn Sayyad. Of them is that uh, the Prophet wasallam heard that there is this young child who has these visions of the jinn. He predicts the future. And so Umar and the Prophet this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, they walked towards a group of children who were playing and amongst them was Safi ibn Sayyad. And Sa ibn, ibn Sayyad is his name. And that's, he's called in hadith literature Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was not aware that the Prophet was coming until he was right behind him. And Ibn Sayyad turned around and the Prophet was there. So the Prophet said to Ibn Sayyad, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? Do you testify I am Rasulullah Wasallam? And Ibn Sayyad said, I testify that you are the Rasul of the Ummiyeen in a derogatory manner. You are the Rasul of the unlettered people. You're not Rasul to me, you're Rasul to the unlettered folk. So the Ibn Sayyad then said to the Prophet and he's 12, 13 years old, look, he said, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? What did we say? One of the signs of a Dajjal is what? Dajjal claims he is Rasul. Right? So he is now saying, and look at the arrogance. And this also shows you that this is what happens when you start getting involved in, in magic. You really become a very evil person. How dare in front of the face of the process and you are twisting the question and you're saying, okay, you ask me now, let me ask you, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Amantu Billahi wa Rasulihi. I believe in Allah and His Messenger. That was his response. And he said to Ibn Sayyad, what do you see? What do you see? What visions come to you? Ibn Sayyad said, I see two people come to me. One of them tells the truth, one of them tells lies. The Prophet ﷺ said, rather, the matter has been made confusing for you, meaning both of them are telling lies. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, I have a test for you. I have hidden something for you. And what was that thing that he was hiding? He was hiding a verse from the Quran, which is, uh, 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 um, what's the half of here? What is it? Yes, what is the beginning of it? My mind is a little bit awkward because of the Hajj. I'm still not fully recovered. Fartaqib yawma ta'ti as-sama bi dukhanin mubin. Fartaqib, I'm saying fantadir. Fartaqib yawma ta'ti as-sama bi dukhanin mubin. Okay? So the Prophet had recited this verse to the Sahaba. And he's saying, I'm holding, I'm testing Ibn Sayyad. He says he knows ilm al-ghayb. He says he knows everything. Okay, I just recited this verse. Let's see, does he know did I recite this verse or not? You see the test, right? And by the way, any person who charges you $5 an hour to predict the future is betraying his own lies when he's forced to charge you $5 to predict the future. If he knew the future, he would be investing in Bitcoin and the stock market and become multimillionaire instantaneously. The fact that he has to charge you $5 to read your hand, the fact that you have to call in $3.99 per minute to predict the future indicates what a liar that person is. Is that clear what I'm saying, right? 
So the Prophet is testing. This is a man, he is claiming he knows ilm al ghaib He knows everything. Okay, I just recited a verse 20 feet away from him. Let's see whether he can tell his followers what I just recited to all of you. Simple test, right? فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانِ مُبِينَ He had recited to Umar ibn Khattab. Now he goes to Ibn Sayyad and he says to Ibn Sayyad, I have a test for you. Do you know what it is? Do you know what I have hidden for you? And this shows you, Ibn Sayyad did have contact with the jinn, but the jinn are not all knowledgeable. All he could say was, Dukh, Dukh, Dukh. And the verse was, Fartaqib, right? Fartaqib, yawma ta'atisma bidukhanim mubin. And the jinn narrated two letters, Dukh, 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 and not the whole verse. The whole verse. You see that, right? So there was some jinn that was communicating with Ibn Sayyad and he wasn't able to do it. So the Prophet said, Ikhsa ya adu wallah. And Ikhsa literally translates as shut up. It is a harsh word. Ikhsa, the English word is shut up. And the Prophet was never harsh except to those who deserved it. Ikhsa ya adu wallah. Shut up, O enemy of Allah. Falan ta'adu wa qadrak. You shall never go beyond your meagerness. You think you are so big, you're never going to go beyond this. Umar ibn Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. This is a, a, a Dajjal. He says he is Rasulullah. He's communication with the jinn. His penalty is execution. Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. And if he is other than that Dajjal, your killing won't benefit anyone. He's nothing. It's going to go away. Right? Leave him be. Now, this hadith is inside Muslims, authentic. Now, if he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. Why? Because who shall kill that Dajjal? Isa alayhi salam. No one will be able to kill that one. So the Prophet is telling Umar, if he is that Dajjal, you won't be able to kill him. And if he is other than that Dajjal, yeah, what's the big deal? He's going to come and go, no one will care. Your killing will not harm any or benefit anyone he's going to be a minor which was the case he became a footnote in history majority of muslims don't even know about his name even though during the time of the sahaba he was somewhat of a big deal somewhat in the sense we don't know his state so ibn sayyad is no joke there was some murkiness about him about who he was however eventually ibn sayyad simply disappears we don't know when he died the bottom line in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a cryptic figure who was a minor Dajjal in that time frame. And because he was still a young child, the Prophet ﷺ did not know, is he going to grow up to become that Dajjal or not? And the Prophet ﷺ passes away and that confusion lingers on in the Sahaba. Some of them still think he is the Dajjal. But we now know that he could not have been that Dajjal. Now it is clear he wasn't that Dajjal. And so you should be aware of that controversy that Ibn Sayyad was one of the minor Dajjals. Now, did he embrace Islam or not? Allah knows best. But this last phrase that he said to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri really throws a spanner. Means he still had contact with the world of the jinn. And he still has some issues that are un-Islamic. So he, he dies in murky circumstances and we leave his affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first... Uh, interesting controversy about the judge.